So now we're going to look at how C++ stores floats or doubles into memory. And the way you declare, so I'm just going to show it for a float, but a double process is very similar. So the way you declare a float is that you first type out the word float, and then you put the variable name you want. So I'll put something like height, and then you write out the float with the decimal point, so which is 170.3 in this example, and then put F at the end like this. And now I'll just explain what each of these parts does. So this float part right here reserves four bytes of memory or 32 bits to be able to store our float value. This height part gets um, associated or written down with that address so that whenever we call height, we can reference that um, area in memory and retrieve our value. And finally, we have this equals 173.f part. And what this does is it converts 170 Point three into an IEEE 754 binary representation of this float and then it stores that into the um, memory. So uh, I'm not going to go into the details of the IEEE 754 conversion in this video. Um, I've done a separate guide on that if you want to know the details. But essentially we'll get back a number like this. So we have the sign which is positive. We have the exponent which is 127 plus 7 which is 134, and then we have the fractional part right here. And this is how our memory will be allocated. So we'll have the first bit as a sign, then the exponent for 8 bits, and the remaining 23 bits are the mantis or the fractional part like this. And this is what will get stored into memory. And then when we read the float, so if we were to do something like std c out, and then height like this, what happens here is that um, the program goes into the memory address associated with height and it reads in the four bytes of data in binary. It then does an IEEE 754 conversion of this um, back into a proper float or a number and then converts it into a decimal which it then feeds to the output like this. So this is how it works and this is how it outputs our number back to us. So now I'm going to just do a little demo to represent all of this. Again, the details of the conversion you can find in a separate video. So what this does is it um, creates a float and stores it to memory and then we'll print out the address and um, how many bytes it takes up its value and the memory block so just so we can take a look so if I were to do um, dot slash or oh, sorry g plus plus dot slash demo dot cpp dash o dot slash demo so we've compiled it now so what I'm going to do now is run the program so like this and we can see that we've stored our float into memory and we have our memory address right here and um, like I said before the size of the float is four bytes or if it was a double it would be eight bytes but we're just thinking about a float right now and like I said when we have the value um, it'll get read in converted and then converted into a decimal which gets outputted right here and we can also see the memory blocks right here and um, if we take a look at this uh, we can see that um, in this case we have the zero for the positive sign bit then we have the one zero 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 one one zero which is the exponent bit and then we have our fractional bit right here so this is what gets stored into the memory like I said these are our 32 bits and we can also test this out so what I'm I told you that this is 134, so if we do 134 take away 127, we'll get 7, which is the exponent. And then we have our fraction part right here. So if I just convert this um, to decimal like this, um, what I'm just going to do is just convert this back into a decimal, just so I can show you how the math works here. So if I paste this in, um, I need to get rid of the dashes here. This is our number right here and then if we add the 1.0 to this and then we take this number and then we multiply this by 2 to the power of 134 take away 127 um, maybe I've copied that wrong
Yeah, sorry. Um, I just copied it wrong. Um, if I do it by times 2 to the power of 7, we can see that it roughly equals our float of 170.3. And um, basically, this part will get rounded. And we get back our value 170.3. That's essentially how it works. So again, C++ uses the IEEE754 storage of floats. Um, if I were to store a different number in here like this, and then I convert it, um, this should be what our bits should look like. So let's just take a look at if this works properly. So if I paste this into here, and then we try and store this number. So let's recompile and run this. And we can see sign bit zero. Um, the exponent bit is one zero one triple zero one one zero zero. We have one triple zero one one zero zero here, and then we have the fractional bit, which pretty much matches what's in here. So yeah, that's essentially how C plus plus will store um uh, floats or doubles um using the I triple E seven five four conventions.